Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another delicious list, and today I'm very excited to be talking about my top 49 city-building board and card games of all time. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining. This is what I like to call the flea market of board games, but I'm going to be talking about the 49 city-building games that I've played. Now, I first off want to say that the way I compiled this list was by going to Board Game Geek, and they have a whole subcategory of city-building games. I went through every single one of them. It took hours. It does. It really does take an hour or two to get through all of them. Cooperative is going to be insane. Uh, and I found 49 games that I'd played. Now, I feel like that number is low. I really do, because I feel like this is a more common theme that I've played more, but apparently 49 is what Board Game Geek says, so that's what we're going with. And we've got the categories up here. We've got the six. We've got the greats. We've got the goods. We've got the forgettable goods. The meh. The forgettable bad, and then just the straight up bad. And I will be rating these each one, and so by the end of this, there will be my top 49 city building games of all time. And we will start off, ooh, we'll start off strong with King Domino. Now, I'm going to be honest with you here. I want to put it in the greats. I think it's a great game, but I don't remember what the heck the difference is between King Domino and Queen Domino. I don't remember which one came first. I'm pretty sure King Domino came first and Queen Domino is the expansion. Whichever one's the expansion is the one I like better, but I'm gonna put it here in the goods for now because I feel like if it deserved to be in the greats, I would remember more about it. Now that being said, I do think it is a great filler rate. I think it, yeah, I gotta put a King Domino's in a great. If you've never played King Domino's, it's super light. It is delightful from Blue Orange Games. It's this game we're gonna be making this, uh, this tile grid in front of you, and it's really all about the colors and the different parts of the land and trying to string them together. But it's such a spectacular light game. Easy to learn, easy to teach. Definitely one I can recommend. Next, we'll go with City Skylines. Ooh. Ooh, is it bad or is it forgettable bad? And this one was super disappointing. I remember they, uh, Cosmos reached out to me. They're like, hey, would you like to do a video on this? Uh, and I was like, yes, because I love the video game. I love the concept. I love Cosmos. I think they do some pretty stinking good games. But this one, I did not have fun with. I don't remember why we disliked it so strongly, but we played it on game night and hated it. I then played it solo. And I also... Did not like it, but I don't remember why. So forgettable bad. If it was really that bad, it would go into bad. I, it would be burned into my brain why it's bad, because I love shooting bad videos. When I play a bad game, I almost get giddy. I'm like, ooh, I gotta tear it apart. Uh, as bad as that is, because that's someone's baby. Queen Domino is the expansion, and it's better than King Domino, but they're both great. And I, what I remember is, I believe, it's also an expansion to King Domino. Either way, if you like lighter games... You can't go wrong with either of them. They're both absolutely spectacular. Be sure to get the giant expansion, too. It adds, like, this really cool giant, and it's, like, this big thing that you take the tiles out. It's delightful. It's delightful. Is that going to be my number one of all time? Heck no. I think it's going to be towards the bottom of the greats, but who knows? Who knows? That's why I like doing this list, because I don't do any prep work. No prep work here. You want to see no prep work? We're going to talk about Florenza which goes squarely into the forgettable good. I shot a review on it. It is a meaty, crunchy, three-hour Euro about painters in the, some very, very long times ago, and it was a great Euro game. And if I had someone who was like, oh, this is one of my favorite games. Hey, you want to teach it? Uh, I, I'd be like, I haven't played it in a while. They'd be like, you wanna, I can teach it to you. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I want to play it again. I know it's a good game. I don't remember why it was good. It's probably great, actually, but I don't have a forgettable great category, because if you're that great, then I would remember why. So next we have Seven Wonders Duel, which goes slam up to the top. This is, quite honestly, my favorite two-player game of all time, if uh, if I'm on a time pinch. If I'm not on a time pinch, it goes to something else, but if it, there's somewhat of a time pinch, Seven Wonders Duel is just absolutely spectacular. If you have not tried Seven Wonders Duel yet, it is one of the best two-player head-to-head games. It feels so well-balanced. It's based on the immensely spectacular and popular Seven Wonders, which is also probably going to chart very high, uh, but yes. And it also has a solo variant now that you can print off, which I would love to try out sometime. I really should print that off and uh, review that. All right, now we're also going to get into some weird stuff here because some of these games I don't really feel were really city building games, but I feel like they maybe just slapped them in there to, I don't know, get more eyes on them. Case in point, Vikings Gone Wild. This is a really great game. I would rather play this than Queen Domino and King Domino any day of the week. And I can't go above Seven Wonders Duel. I think if you would have asked me this when I first played Vikings Gone Wild, I was nuts for it. Because the thing I loved about Vikings Gone Wild is it's actually a deck building game. But in the deck building game, it, it just, 
it doesn't do anything like new, but it just takes so many of the ideas that were new back in the time. It just says, all right, you can do this and you can do this. Uh, so what I mean by that is it had like a moving buy row where it's like, okay, this buy row is going to be ever changing, but it also had fixed buying things and you could have buildings and like level up the buildings, which is how we get the city building aspect. Okay. So that's fair enough. Um, but I think since then I have not played in a good long time. Unfortunately, I would love to get it back to the table. There's even a promo card of me in there. Bowers Magic Corner. Check it out. I got it. It's hanging up on my wall. Uh, but it's great. It's still a great deck builder. No bones about it. When I get to the deck building list, uh, which I think is going to have to be deck and bag building, because for some reason there's just not a straight deck building category into, uh, on Board Game Geek, it's going to be towards the top. So next we have Flip City. I hated this game. I did not like this game. I absolutely, absolutely love this game. It's this, this, this little tiny, tiny box game from Tasty Minstrel Games. And I used to be sponsored by Tasty Minstrel Games. I love Tasty Minstrel Games. I love most of their games, especially when they're in the bigger boxes. However, uh, and, and I've heard this through the grapevine, one of the things that, that was one of the big issues that Tasty Minstrel Games had, because unfortunately, uh, they, they are now kind of... They're, they're really not making much of anything at this point. They're just kind of fulfilling Kickstarters because they had some, some issues. Was because they got really big into a, a whole bunch of these small box games. Like, go look up Tasty Minstrel Games. And yeah, you're going to find Orleans and Chimera Spation and Yokohama and all the big box games. And I feel like the big box games did pretty pretty good for the most part. But then there's just tons and tons and tons of these small box games. And, and this is one of them. Now, I will say, uh, I am in the minority here. I think most people would put this in the good category. Um... But for me, I absolutely did not like it. I did not like it, and I don't remember why, which means we got to go to Forgettable Bad, don't we? It, for it to truly be in the bad category, it has to be burned into my brain why, and I don't remember why I didn't like this game, and I still didn't review this game. It's still it's on my shame of shel shame, shelf of shame. Uh, but it's shorter than City Skylines, so I'd really rather play that first. Let's get a good one. I'm sick of these bad games lingering in the Forgettable Bad. Let's go to Bruges. Oh my goodness, it's so good. I believe this is Stefan Feld. And for some insanely terrible reason, this this has not had a reprint. And I don't know why. I don't know what's holding it up. And it annoys the living god-awful about me. It's one of my uh, Grail games. But it, it is it is quite literally a city builder. And it had some really... It used cards in a really ingenious way. And it was Stefan Feld. So it was, you know, you had the cards. And you were building a city in front of you. But there was also, like, these bricks that you would play on the board. And there was, like, a race aspect to it. And it was, oh, so good. And the expansion just made everything better. And if you want to find it now... Good luck if you're not willing to pay out your nose, but mm, I can't go above Seven Wonders Duel. I've played Seven Wonders Duel like 20 times, and I've only played this like five or six times. Uh, so i got to go with Seven Wonders Duel because I, I do think it's very close. And when it's close like that, I, I tend to go with the game that I know for a fact is something that I would I would recommend Seven Wonders Duel just about anybody who likes two-player games. Charterstone. Interesting one. Very interesting one. This was the legacy game from Stonemeyer Games. This is more of a worker placement game. I covered it in my worker placement game list. And I think it's a good game. I do. I played it 24 times now. Because <laughs> I played through two campaigns, I think 25. Um, I really have no desire to ever go back to it. If, except when my kids are older. I would like to play with my kids when they're older so we can do the reset pack and we can have a good time. And if I'm willing to play a game 36 times, i got to put it in the great category, right? I, I got to do that. Like, if I'm like... No, I'll play, a good, I'll play a good game 36 times. Forget that. You will not make me bend my list to your will, Jamie Stegmeyer. London. Michael Wallace. Uh, I think his name is Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace. Uh, he was a receiver for the... Uh, he was a receiver in the NFL. But I think it's this is... Uh, what's his name? Oh. Uh, oh, my gosh. Last name Wallace. London, anyway, is a very good game. I don't think I'd put it in the great category for me, but I think a lot of people would put it in the great category. I think it's a great game. I think it's very well designed. Uh, it's very, very unforgiving, and I would rather revisit this than Charterstone, just because in Charterstone, unless I'm going to play it, like just the whole thing, play the 12 games, I'd rather just go revisit London one time. Because I remember really enjoying the game, it was a game I gave to a friend of mine, uh, but but it's very mean. Very, very mean game, set in London, where it was also, it, it really delves into the theme of how bad things were back there, like people starving to death and stuff. I think I remember a card was like, there was some peasants dying or something, but it was a good thing because, uh, like, because the peasants died, there were less mouths to feed, and so you're like, yay! And then you're like, oh, wait, no, history theme games, ah! Uh, but still a very good game, and one where I, I would absolutely recommend anyone check out. Um, I don't remember his last name, Wallace, though. All right, let's see. 
We're going with Barbarian. This is a really underrated, under the radar game from um, they made Zpocalypse. It's not. It's a company you would not expect making this. They primarily dip their toes in like minis games, and it's good. It's good. I think it's one expansion away from actually getting up to the great t uh, category because this is a uh, dice placement game. And if I recall correctly, you're building your bear's little civilization and the bear artwork is just absolutely adorable. You can't really see it, unfortunately, because... Oh, yeah, we can see it. Cool. Yeah, it's really a stinking adorable artwork. Oh, my God. What did I do? It's really stinking adorable artwork. And... Um, yeah, it's dice placement. You build your base, but you're also attacking the other base at the very uh, the same time. But it's really smooth and a clean system. And a game that I really hope they do some things with in the future. Because I think it definitely has the potential uh, to move up into the great category. Because I do remember one of my main cons with, with it was... After playing it a couple times, I was immediately like, I want more cards. I want more cards. I want variety. I want more variability. Uh, but I love dice placement. And Barbarian is a very... If you see that on the cheap, check that one out. It's a really solid game. All right, Caper. I called the frickin' shenanigans on you, Caper. This I, this is like a two-player game where you're building a heist team to go on a heist. How is this a city-building game, Board Game Geek? I was going to put it in the meh category because I'm so upset, but it's actually a, it's a really good two-player game. Um, I don't remember it as strongly as I remember the other three games on this list, so I'm going to put it right there. But it's a really good head-to-head -head two-player game. Great components it's from the same people who did, uh, I want to say, Parks. And they made some smaller box games before they really hit it big with Parks. And I think this is the one that came out right before Parks. And you can see a lot of what they took in Parks, or in this game, component quality-wise, and just put it into Parks. And, um, yeah, so that's really a really interesting game right there. Definitely a solid game. Check that one out if you like two-player games. But, but I don't think it's a city-building game. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to go with Cloud City. Ooh, 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 did I put it in the bad? Because it's not forgettable. But that being said, it's very fresh in my brain. It's just boring. No, this goes in the meh. This goes in the meh. It's not a bad game. It's just a meh game. It came out from Blue Orange Games this year. And it's a gimmick game. And I don't have a problem with gimmick games. It's, it's a game where there's a really cool thing in it. Think Dark Tower, which is like, oh, there's a big Dark Tower. Cool stuff happens. Uh, games where you get squirted in the face with water, like, oh, look, Billy, hit the pinball, so I get squirted in the face with water. Those are gimmick games. This is a gimmick game because you're just putting pieces on this little tiny grid in front of you, and then, oh, cool, now we can connect the two pieces with this piece of cardboard, and they're plastic pieces, and that's it. It's, it's a very lifeless, heartless game, but it's not bad. It's just meh. Speaking of meh, we're going to go with uh, Rick and Morty's Anatomy Park. Actually, one of my uh, this is probably going to go down as one of my top videos of all time. So, <laughs> much love, Rick and Morty. Uh, I think it's my top ten now, and it's, it's going to just continue in popularity, because Rick and Morty is going to continue in popularity for at least probably another five years. But the game itself is, it's meh. It, it's all about uh, connecting tiles, and you're building a city, I guess. It also, yeah, Cloud City, at least you're, you're quite literally building a city, skyscrapers. This falls into that meh category of, this does not feel like a city building game. Because it's not! You're laying down tiles and you're, like, exploring Anatomy Park inside the, the body, and it's, it's... It's not a particularly good game. Uh, I did not enjoy it, and I don't remember why. So this is, like, a forgettable map, but also not a city builder. Naughty. I mean, I guess technically you're laying tiles, but get out of here. Machi Koro gets a really bad rap. It does. Everybody trashes Machi Koro. Yes, is Space Base better? Yes, of course, Space Base is better. Space Base, oh my AG is just so, so delightful. But Machi Koro still holds a nice place in my heart. If you like Catan, I think it's a great uh, another game to get for you if you're in that sort of thing, because it's essentially you just buy cards and roll dice, and oh, look, my the, the car, the number on my cards came up, so I gained goodies. And that's the whole basic premise of it. So take the Catan aspect where you roll and you, get, you either get robbed or you get goodies and that, and I still think it's a good game. It's light, it's simple, and by golly, sometimes I just like that. Now, does it have a couple things that can be, you know, kind of broken and fedangled a little bit? Yeah, potentially. Are there good strategies to go with? Yes. But still, Machikor, I think, is a very good game. I think it just gets a bad rap. All right. Ooh, let's go with one of the brothers. Let's do San Juan. Now, San Juan, if you don't know, is pretty much Puerto Rico, but in card game form. And it's a very good card game. It is a great phone game, by the way. I used to have a phone app on it. I used to love playing it. Terrible graphics, but just the gameplay itself. I probably, I, I've played San Juan 
hundreds of times. Hundreds of times on my phone. Which means it's got to go good to great. But how great is it? Is it is it a great game? I haven't played it in so long. But hundreds of times... Nope. Not bending my will, but I would rather play it at Machi Cora. Top of the good. We get to Puerto Rico? Yeah, let's get to Puerto Rico. This was the number one game on Board Game Week for a very, very long time. Back before the really big boom of board games. Because we're so spoiled now. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous ridiculous how spoiled we are the same way we talk about technology we should talk about board games think of the the number of innovations that have come in the last 30 years in electronics based on 30 years ago it's it's night and day now think about the board games from 30 years ago and the board games of today once again night and day uh and this one was like in that middle period you know they were at the top of the hill before the snowball came down and i still think it's a great game yeah i do and I would rather play it than Vikings Gone Wild. But not Bruges. I still like Bruges. I think Bruges is a much better game. Puerto Rico, yes, quite literally a city building game. You're placing down tiles. Um, you deal with slaves. You have slaves. Let me rephrase that. You do have slaves. Uh, it's not a fun themed game. And I actually did a video about the theme of this game because I, I learned about it in one of my classes. Like, oh my god, that's what Puerto Rico is about. And I was like, ah! Because, hey, history themed games! <clears throat> it's funny. London, Puerto Rico, right there. All right, uh, another history theme game. This one is much more interesting. This is about Lisboa, which if I have my games correctly, this is going to the forgettable good, because once again, this is a super heavy, chunky Euro game. It's by uh, Lavarda to LaSalle, I think his name is. I should know that. He's an excellent game designer. It's just I never get his name. Like, I get, I've reviewed a couple of his games just because I got them, and I was like, all right, this is what we have to play. This is what we need to play, because, you know, my game group knows I review things. And uh, we played it, and we really liked it. A really good game. They were like, okay, maybe we'll play this again next week, so before we learn, forget the rules. And, uh, the, you know, <clears throat> so I'll try and get it played at least twice, <laughs> like, in a short period of time, because I know if I don't get it played another month, I don't want to go back to these rules. And so I'm putting in the forgettable good, but a very good game. I do remember liking this. Uh, but it's about a city that burned down, and now you're repairing the city, I do believe. And it's actually historically accurate. Which I thought was cool. Which, definitely city building. Shifting realms! Forgettable good. <clears throat> forgettable good. All the way at the bottom of forgettable good. I remember thinking of the game. Oh, okay, this game's good. It came out a couple years ago. Got a copy of it at Gen Con. It uh, was unique because uh, the whole premise was there was different aspects that would come into play based on different realms you chose. And there was, so there was variability. And I remember thinking it was pretty good. I didn't keep it, though. Shot a review on it. Don't remember much about it. It's pretty good. And I'd rather go revisit it than Florenza. But not Lisboa, because I know Lisboa was definitely creme de la creme of forgettable good. Manhattan. All right, this is a new one. Just got reprinted recently. It was a Spielish Yars winner. I don't remember the basic mechanisms of the game. Uh, but the cool thing about it was you were putting together... You remember those blocks you had when you were like a kindergartner? And you would stack them together and you, the counting cubes were like, one, two, three. And then you'd put them on your finger and you'd wiggle them around like uh, bugles. It has those. You stack them up and you're building things in Manhattan. It was a good game. It was forgettable good. Uh, it was family weight, light, fox mine games. My, I remember my son liked it a good deal. And honestly, I'd re- rather revisit it than Lisboa. Just because I know Lisboa. I will be done. You will teach me Manhattan. We will play Manhattan before we even get Lisboa set up. And you know what? I just don't really play Lisboa. All right, we're going to put that there. Let's let's not be silly. Castle Dukes. Now this one. I did a Kickstarter on this one. This is a really interesting game. I'm going to put it in the good. It's definitely not forgettable. This one, you're actually building a castle. Like, you are building a physical structure. And if I recall correctly, it actually needs to be able to stand up. uh, Because, you know, there's going to be dragons that are attacking your castle. And I remember it was good. I remember, I thought it was missing something. It was missing an oomph factor. But I would like to go back and revisit it. Uh, Because I I played it enough to do my video, and then uh, it was a prototype. So, and I never got a final version of the game because, spoiler alert, if you get into reviewing, and they'll always be like, hey, we'll get you one after the Kickstarter. And most of the time people forget because Kickstarters are insanely stressful. And I still think it's a good game, though. But, uh, close to forgettable good. But no, I remember the basic, the gimmick of it was good enough. I'm going to put it there. Not quite the forgettable good, but it's towards the bottom of the good. I remember enough about it. 
All right. Lords of Waterdeep, big hitter, big hitter. One of my gateway games. I think it's probably one of the first 15, 20 games I played when I got into the hobby. Really loved it. One of the first games I owned. But I can't let that overshadow the fact that I think Bruges is a better game. I would still rather play Lords of Waterdeep with the expansion than Puerto Rico with the expansion. So we'll put it there. But Bruges is going to be a hard one. I think at least for Euro games. It's going to be really hard for anything to get up there. Also, Lords of Waterdeep. Come on. City building. What? Why? Because I can buy tiles on the bottom? Get out of here. Get out of here. I, I, sh I should demote you. I will. You're demoted to the top of the good category for that Lords of Waterdeep. I will not have a non-city building game being in the top. Th Seven Wonders Duel, actually. It's if Yeah, it's, it's city building enough. I'm not going to split hairs too much. Carson City, forgettable bad. I don't remember why we dislike this game. I played it in my classroom and I played it in my game night at both times. I remember both the children and my friends are like, eh. We don't ever need to play that again. And I remember I was like, yep, good. And, but I remember it wasn't as much hatred as I had for Flip City. I freaking hate Flip City. Go to hell, Flip City. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, we're flying through. This is only 49. Kingsburg. Yes. Kingsburg. Towards the top. Ooh. <sighs> yeah, put it there. I'm going there. Kingsburg is excellent. One of my favorite dice placement games of all time. <clears throat> one of my favorite worker placement games of all time. And one of my favorite games of all time, period. Get yourself the second edition with all the expansions and the doodads. There's tons of different things. They're going to add variability. They'll take away a little bit of luck. Uh, they make the ending a little bit more climactic and eventful. Because, as you know, that's one of the weakest things I think about Kingsburg. <clears throat> is at the end of the game, or at the end of every season, it's like, oh, here's the king, and if they roll a six, well, guess what? Everybody's going to succeed. Or if they roll a one, you know, everybody's going to be hosed. You know, it could just be a little bit swingy. And I don't like that aspect of it, but I love everything else. <clears throat> but for now, Kingsburg, number one, especially the second edition of it, over Seven Wonders Duel, which I think is one of my favorite seven, two, two player games of all time, but I just, I, I don't play two player as much. All right, Seven Wonders. Ooh, the big dog, big dog. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? To the great... Right there. Right there. I still have a very soft spot for Seven Wonders, and I own just the base game. I've played one expansion. I want to sink my toes, dip my teeth. Is that the right one? Whatever. I want to do all the different stuff with the expansions, and I hope to in the future, And I, but I'll still play the base game. And honestly, if I have new people over, <clears throat> and they want to play something, I will, I will grab Seven Wonders a good deal of the time. Now, that being said, I feel like we should put a game that I think really had a lot of inspiration from Seven Wonders... Right up next, and that's between two cities. And I'm going to put it higher. Ooh. Ooh, it's almost higher than Bruges. It is. It is for me. Because it's so unique, and it's so different. And when I first got it, it really blew my mind. And I apologize for my throat right now. <clears throat> In between two cities. It's so cool, because it takes the whole drafting aspect from Seven Wonders, where you're passing tiles one way or the other way. Um... Which you still do. But you're actually building a city. And you have two cities you're building. One right here. And one right there. And you're working on this city with this person. And you're working on this city with this person. And you're trying to keep both those cities as evenly balanced as possible. And it's so unique. It's so fun. It is a perfect gateway game. And the reason why I say it's a perfect gateway game is is because I believe cooperative games are some of the best gateway games because everybody wants to succeed, everybody wants to win, uh, as long as you're not, you know, quarterbacking too much. But in this one, uh, the people who know to play the game, you just put experienced people by them and say, all right, uh, well, we have a, this is a big factory city, this is a big, uh, we're really looking for more diners in here, you can work together, I think it is a spectacular game between two cities, especially the expansion adds more. The expansion is really, really good, I don't think it's a must own but it's great if you love between two cities it's a must own but if you just like it you can get by without it carcassonne wow we got some heavy hitters <clears throat> and i'll be honest with you carcassonne is not one of my gateways it never was i played it and i like it a lot and i see why it is and i'd rather play it more than queen and king domino it's a great game it's got a million expansions i can't wait to explore the expansions and maybe one day with the expansions it will go higher. But for now, 
right here above Queen Domino, below Vikings Gone Wild. Viceroy. Now, this game, I do not hear anyone talking about anymore. It is such a delightful little game. It is not a city building game, though. I mean, sure, maybe in the theme it is. I'm not going to put it to bad. I just need to try and uh, stall a little bit so I can cough without anybody noticing. But it's really hard to do on a live stream. So, uh, <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, but Viceroy, it's a great game. It really is where you, you just, you're getting cards, but no, maybe it's getting forgettable good. Okay, so the basic premise is you're building this pyramid, kind of like Seven Wonders Duel. Think of it like that, except in reverse. Uh, but you get these cards and you draft them. There's different symbology on the cards. And there's, it's almost point salad because there's just a million different ways to score points because you can match these gems that are on the corner of the cards. You can, and there's, there's a bidding phase. And it's, 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 it's a lot. It's one of those games that I really wish I knew how to play. I, I want Rodney to do a video on it. That's what I want. I want to, I want to watch it played for Viceroy. And if that happened, I would play Viceroy more. Also, the expansion is great. Once again, I don't have a copy of it, but I did the Kickstarter review for it and I had to ship it down to somebody else. It adds a great deal to the game. And I feel bad putting it for the gettable good because it's such a good game. But there you go. Why hasn't it hit my table? You know, why can I remember Barbarians and Charterstone and London and Machi Koro and San Juan and Lords of Waterdeep and all these other games more? That's what I need to look at. I need to think about that. While I think Viceroy is a better game than Machi Koro, nuts and bolts mechanics-wise... Which one's getting played in my house? Well, I don't own either. I don't own much Coro. <laughs> but, but, but I still feel like uh, that's what I'm getting there. Village in a Box. This is such a unique, really interesting game on the Game Crafter. I'd love to see a company pick this up and do like a big edition of it. This is a fascinating little game. I'll put it in the meh here, but it's not meh. Where you just got to shuffle up all the cards. You deal out the cards. And then it has like a pit style thing where you're like, all right, I want to trade when you, it's just like some fast, frantic, quick trading. You, it's just people talking over people trying to make deals, swing things. And then after you, you've done the dealing, you make this little village and you make the village out of the cards. It's not as aesthetically pleasing as it like where you put the cards together and you actually create a little village. It's more, it's a little bit more heartless where it's like, Oh, here's a picture of, you know, this is a farm. And it's like, Oh, stack your three farms together. And it's like, Oh, well, I'm covering up. But it's still a very good game. I don't know if I put it in the great category. It has an expansion, Village and People in a Box, which I think pushes it higher. But I really need a second edition uh, to put it there. And I can't put it above Lords of Water Deep. I can't put it above Sam Juan. Whew. Yeah, right there, though. Village in a Box. Check it out on the GameCraft. It's a really good game. Tell them Bowers Game Quarter sent you. Or you can check out my video on it. I did a video on it. Just played this this week, fresh in my mind. This is one I've played three times, and every time I've played it, I've really sick and enjoyed it. It's Dice City from AEG. Now, I will say, as I'm playing it, I'm thinking to myself, man, I'd rather be playing Space Base, so I can't quite put it in the great category, but I still think it's a dang good game, and I will put it right there. Because with the expansions, I think I'd rather play Dice City over Machi Kora. That being said, I haven't played Machi Kora or Dice City expansions, so I don't know. It could flip-flop. It could go higher. Probably not going to go lower, but there we go. Next, we got New York 1901. This is a fascinating game. So this was uh, for Blue Orange Games. came out a couple years ago, maybe four years ago. And it is it comes with these really cool plastic pieces, and you're actually placing the plastic pieces onto the board and constructing skyscrapers in the city. And based on what streets they're running on, you get victory points. It was very good. It has not hit the table. And I'm going to put it at the very top. No, right there. No, right there. Wow. Wow, New York 1901. Yes, I'd rather play it than Manhattan. All right. We're going to do one more, then I'm going to take a short 18-second intermission. All right. So, we have Architecturia. This is a really unique game from, um... Oh, is it? Arcane Wonders. Small box game. What about this? One of those size boxes. And it's all about uh, this, This I guess you're building a city. The city is in the middle and there are cards. And you can only place cards based on the numbers if they're higher or lower. And then cards will trigger each other and they do all sorts of weird, cool stuff. And I guess it's a city builder. But the crux of this game was when you got into the advanced mode. The basic mode was okay. But when the advanced mode, you actually started to get like, you started to get more of a unique feel for each character and each color. And it really, it's a game that I'm going to put in the good category. Uh, I think it needs an expansion. I'll put it right there. It's with Barbarian, where if it had an expansion, I think it would really pop. I need to go check on something for 18 seconds. I apologize.
The beauty of the live stream. Oh my gosh. I, I've, I've just gotten it live recently. All right. So, uh, above and below, Ryan Lockett, Red Raven Games. You know Ryan Lockett's story. It's fantastic. It's fascinating. I'm not the biggest fan of his games, uh, but, but he does everything. Art, graphic design, Kickstarter, everything. Everything, which is just insane. Why, Ryan? Uh, but he's got a loyal fan base. None of his games have wowed me. And to be honest with you, I remember the, the big thing with this is there's like a book, and I played it three times. I mean, I've played it a good chunk of times, and it just, it was like, yeah, it's good. I like it. It had a gimmick that was like cool with a book, and I liked it. I thought it was very good. Better than New York 1901. No, I remember more about 1901, so I think it's not fair. New York 1901, you stay there. All right, now we have Kalis. Kalis, okay. Top Dog. Old classic. It's kind of in that Puerto Rico era where it was before things really started to get huge. And I think it's a very good game. I still think it is. But I gotta go Forgettable Good. Because I don't remember a dang thing about Kalis. Uh, I remember I played it on an app quite a few times. It was fun. And I'd like to revisit it more than Above and Below. I'd like to revisit it more than New York 1901. But I still, Lisboa, I remember being just so... Like, honestly, I'll be brutally honest here. I think Lisboa is a great game. But I'm putting the Forgettable Good... Because I don't remember much about it. Peloponis. Peloponis, I think that's what it's called. This is such a good game. This is such an insanely under... It's a great game. I'm going to put it up here. I don't care. Check this game out. Some people might have an issue with it. We actually, oddly enough, I was talking about this game just a couple weeks ago. Uh, with Scott Nicholson. One of the OGs uh, of reviewing. Now lives up in Canada. Uh, I think on a sheep farm or something. It's really cool. But but he was talking about it, and, I was, and he really boiled it down to the fact that with the Peloponis, you only make seven decisions the entire game. And I never really thought about it, but like, but yeah, you do. You make seven really fascinating decisions as you, you, you know, you're building. Uh, you're building your, your pyramids or whatever the heck it, the, the theme was. Uh, I think Peloponnese was a real place. And I really like this game. And I still own it. I haven't played it in like a year. Played it last time I played it was at a convention, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I need to get this table more." I think there's an expansion that makes it even better, and I I would rather play it over Carcassonne, but not Vikings Gone Wild. All right, so right now Kingsburg holding down the spot for my favorite city builder of all time. Little surprised about that. Little surprised. I love Kingsburg, but I guess I guess this is a genre that I just I just don't smash get into too much. Uh, judging by only 49 games played. And I know that sounds crazy. 49 games played, that's a lot of games. Well, it's like, you know, I've, I've, I've reviewed like 1,100 games, and I've played, you know, thousands upon thousands more. So for there only to be 49 city-building games that I've ever played, that's kind of surprising. Because I remember every game I've played, I just don't remember everything about the game. Coin of Crowns, case in point, this forgettable good. Played it three times in my classroom. I remember the kids really liked it. And I think there was like an upgrade thing where it didn't feel like a city-builder. I don't know. I put it right there, because I do remember that the, the kids in my class that were 9 and 10 really stinking like this game. I remember there was an aspect where you could upgrade things. For me, I thought it was a little bit by the numbers, but uh, still forgettable good. Top of the forgettable good. Near the top. All right. Everdell. Delightful worker placement game. City builder, yes. You're totally putting down all those cards, and it's you building your little city in there. I think it's a great game. I do there's three expansions, I think, now. I would love to try them, and I would... And I get this game played. Like, this game, I play this probably once every six months-ish. Because it's not too difficult to learn. I love the variety of cards. I love the artwork. It's got the giant table in the middle. Yep, we're going there. We're going there. And that is where you... Sh yeah, we're going to go there. I did it. Everdale. Top five city-building games of all time for me. Sounds weird. Because I just consider it a worker placement game. I always... Uh, but, uh, but I guess it's not. Citadels! This is slander. Forgettable good. I own it. I've played it like ten times. Ten times, probably. I have not played it in like two years. And I don't remember a dang thing about it. I remember the coolest premise of this was it was one of those games where you're picking a number, and if, like, your number comes up, then you get to do the special ability, and your special ability is better if you do it by yourself, and all the different, like, oh, this person stabs that person, it was cool, and I liked it, it was good, it just wasn't the game that literally wowed me. But I'd play it before I'd play Charterstone again. Alright, Suburbia. This is a game that did wow me. I think this is just... Bezia Games. 
Bezier Games. Let's just talk. Bezier Games has a lot of great games. And I think Suburbia is in there. This is one where you quite literally are, are building the city by placing the tiles, and it is delightful fun. Every time I play Suburbia, I'm like, dang it, I wish I owned Suburbia. I do. I've played this game probably four times in the last couple of years, and every time I'm like, man, I wish I still had, I wish I had this game. Because a buddy of mine who moved actually used to have it. But, is it better than Puerto Rico? Which one would I rather play right now? That's the question. Suburbia, Puerto Rico, Seven Wonders. I'd rather play Suburbia. Okay, there you go. But it's so hard to play Seven Wonders. Because all those expansions, all the delightful expansions. All right, Frontier. This one is a newer one on the list. A newer Forgettable Good. We normally don't have games that are on the newish side on Forgettable Good. However, I think I reviewed this one last year. I, no, no, no. I played this game, I think, with some of the kids in my classroom. So that would have played before March. And the inner... Uh, no, it's, that's too high. It's too high. Mm, ooh, whoa, yeah. Ooh, yeah. We're going there? Remember it was a drafting game? That was the most interesting thing about to me. So you draft cards, and then the cards have a lot of text on them. And it's like, oh, this one gains me wood. And then I can use the wood to build this. And the big thing was the artwork was gorgeous. It was simple. It was streamlined. I enjoyed it. My son enjoyed it. And I wanted more. It really fell into that kind of category of, like, the Barbarian up here in games where it's like, all right, you show... Once I get, like, two or three games, what I love in a game is when I sit down for that game and I can try a different strategy every single time. One of my favorite games of all time is Werewolf. And you don't think about how variable Werewolf is. Werewolf is so variable. You can come into the game and pretend you're a freaking werewolf. You can come into the game and claim, I'm the seer. You can lean over to the next person you say, hey... I'm a werewolf, but we're going to be on teams. I'm going to try something unique, but keep me alive. Because if you don't keep me alive... I mean, you can make stuff up. You can say, I'm the hunter. I'm going to That's one of my favorite moves in werewolf. You, you say, I'm the hunter. And if I die, I'm taking you with me. I don't care if you're a werewolf. I don't care if you're the seer. I don't care if you're my grandma. I will kill you if I die. So do not let me die. And it's like you can do whatever you want. I love when games can be numerous paths to explore and try different things. Space Space comes to my mind. I love Space Space because every single time, I never know what I'm going to do. Dominion. This is one of those games, Frontier, where I didn't feel like that. I felt I played it two or three times. I was like, yeah, I've seen I've seen what you got. I've seen what you got. I saw the different paths that I could potentially take. And I'm not thrilled about going down any of them. It was good, but it wasn't great, in my personal opinion. But let's talk about a great. Let's talk about one that stands the test of time. That is Roll Through the Ages. Roll Through the Ages is such a delightful game. It's Matt Leacock of Pandemic fame. It is, um, it looks like it's one of those games you'd find at Cracker Barrels where you're sticking the wooden pegs in there. The dice are wooden. It is, but it's super simple. It's, it's a roll and write. It's a roll and write. It's a roll and write. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's one of the OG roll and writes. Uh, yeah, you're gonna roll, you gotta feed your people, you gotta build monuments. Uh, and, and the crux of the game is you, you have to decide, oh, do I want to be really good at feeding my people? Do I want to be really good at building things? Do I want to be good at getting money? Do I want to try and attack other people? But each time I played, it's like, oh, I'm going to try this one with this one and try a different strategy. And I, I still, I played this last year and I said, man, I got to get this one to the table more. And because I played this so much and I know it's such a consistent, no, it's not going to my bruises. Bruges is a hard stopper for most cases. You have to do something incredibly unique or different, I think, to get above that. Between Two Cities gives me a feeling on, like, most every other game. But Seven Wonders Duel is just absolutely delightful. Two players. And Kingsburg, well, Kingsburg's just spectacular. Harbor. This is one of those tasty Mitchell games, uh, small box games. This is not one of them that, that, that I think didn't sell very well. This one actually sold very well, and it was a good game. And I remember things about the game. I remember there was cool components, and I don't remember much else about the game. So I guess we're going to the forgettable good category. And I would rather play it than Coin of Crowns. I'd rather play this over all these games right here. I think that's the bottom line there. We don't have anything bad. You can go there. No, I don't remember why, though. Okay. <laughs> That's good, though. Uh, Spirium. This one came out... Uh, this is one of the games that I first played when I got into the hobby. I remember my buddy of mine, uh, who wasn't a buddy at my time, but we were, we, were, we, were in that, we were in that fragile period at the beginning where we were hanging out, but kind of hanging out with friends. It's like, oh, cool, maybe we'll, maybe we'll be friends. Uh, we played this. I, I, it's forgettable good. I think this isn't my worker placement one, because apparently it's a worker placement game, and it's a city-building game. It didn't feel like a city-building game. But I would like to revisit it. 
I, I, I forget. I, you know, it's like for Lorenzo. I remember it was good. I remember I enjoyed it, but I'd rather play Forenza. No, I wouldn't, because this was like this was like forty five minutes, and that was like three hours. I'd rather play it than shifting realms. So, all right, here we go. Down to the final six. Sunrise City. Uh this is a one that I think is really, really overlooked. Partially because I think this was a game salute game, which during this time period, game salute was really just getting blasted. Like they had so many issues, you know. Not just with games, but with all the behind the scenes stuff. And I'm and I'm not gonna go into specific details because I don't remember the specific details, but I remember reading a good deal from people th- that had no reason to lie. It's like, hey, I designed this game. You can see my board game geek page. They're currently holding my game hostage. Uh and there wasn't just like one of people like that. And there was there was issues with the Kickstarter and this and that. And that's actually why they well, I don't I shouldn't say that. I don't get sued or something. Um, I assume that's why they actually started Starling Games, which put out Everdell, and now they have a specific line that's just for kids game. They have like three or four different companies now, and you don't hear about Game Salute anymore. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, but it's still a good game. This is a very underrated game. Uh, but, but I remember it was, you, you're building the, the city, but you're actually physically putting tiles on top of each other, so it had a spatial aspect. It was very good. I remember playing it four or five times. Uh, we it just kept hitting the table on the game night that I was at. Like, and I real I enjoyed it every time. And I would rather play it. Nope, Majikora. I still like Majikora a lot. All right, five left. Warsaw, City of Ruins. This is going towards the top of forgettable good. No, I remember enough about it. I remember enough about it to put this in the good. Uh, I really enjoyed Warsaw City of Ruins. This was a really delightful game for my. Want to say yeah, this was a uh, Cosmos maybe. Uh, actually about rebuilding the the Warsaw, Warsaw, which was a city that got absolutely destroyed, and the game is dripping with theme, and you can go to the back of the rule booklet and read all about it, and I love when games do that. And I remember the game being very good, and eventually I, it was one of those games where I was like, you know, I think this is good, I don't think it's great, would anyone in my game group like it? And the same person who got London actually got this, so I feel like I should put these together, because I did actually think it was a great game. Very good game. But I still rather play London, because I remember more about London. Feudalia. Is this a city builder? So this was in the, the deck building game. And this is a really... This is one of the most complex deck building games I've ever played. And I think it's a great game. I really do. It's very good to great. I'm going to put it in the very good category. Because I don't remember it as strongly. But it's one that I kept. Like, this is one of those games I know I'm going to keep forever. Because the experience it gave me was just crunchy deck building. And you don't typically get thinky, crunchy deck building. But this one had it in spades. And while I don't remember exactly what it was, I remember loving it. And honestly, I think this is a great game. But I'm putting in the good, and I really should... Nope. Nope. Let's be honest. we got to be honest with ourselves. Got to be honest here. If it's that good, I would have got it back to the table more. That doesn't seem fair to you, Lisboa and Feudalia, but they're dang good games. All right. Welcome to... Love this game. I absolutely adore... Welcome to, and I don't own it, but I've played it like 15 times. That being said, it's a short game, but I love, I've played some of the expansions. I really enjoy the expansions. It's, it's just, I think it's, I think it's my best roll and write game of all time. And if you're my best roll and write game of all time, that immediately means you go before roll through the ages, right? There's such different beasts. Yeah, I can't put it above Roll of the Ages, but I will put it right there, because I do think it's just an absolutely delightful game. I think that is a game that if I owned it, and I started to acquire expansions, it would be more in this range. Because I feel like this is a game where if you own it, you're going to grab it pretty routinely for like lighter filler weight game nights and stuff. Welcome to is a delightful Roll and Write game about building a city, though. New Salem! What? Is this city building? Eh. New City Salem is a really odd it, it, I, I don't want to say odd in a, in a bad way in a unique social deduction game from now pull the pin games it used to be a different company uh same they just changed their name for whatever reason it was people who did good cop bad cop i don't remember why they changed their name but it, it's a game where and they did a second edition which was really nice stay on topic new salem social deduction game where you're trying to acquire these cards and the cards will go four together and they make a cool little picture it's like oh if you have the three cards and they all match and they're all different colors and all oh, it makes a delightful picture it's that style of game but with social deduction as you're trying to uh and there's black cubes and white cubes and i gotta put in the forgettable good 
Because I'll be honest with you, I thought it was a good game, but it just, it was a little too much on the social deduction, you know? Like, sometimes I just want a hot dog. Sometimes, some, I don't need the relish and the onions and the this and the that and the everything. And I felt like this game was just kind of kitchen sink social deduction. Like, we're going to throw a whole bunch of stuff in here and see what sticks. And I remember it being good, but I don't remember why. And it, it and I have a nice second edition of it. It still doesn't get played because they actually did follow up with their Kickstarter. Go them. Um, but I'd rather play it than Above and Below. I'd rather play it than all these games. Every single one of these games I would rather play Above and Below. And that's, that, I really like this. I would rather play... Okay, that's not true. I'd rather play some of these games with Queen Domino. But hey, what else? Alhambra, last one. Uh, this is a really cool game, a tile lane game, about actually building the city of Alhambra. And uh, if you're going to get it, it was the Spiel des Jahres. It's a great game. It is a great. I'm not going to play around. It's a great game. I, I put it up here in the Queen Domino, King Domino section, but I like it better. I actually like it better than Carcassonne. And I like it better than Peloponnese. I'll put it right there. Uh, if you're going to get it, get the big box expansion well, because it's one of those games where just the more stuff you have in the game, just the cooler the game is. But there you go. Those are my top 49 city building games. This is a really interesting list to make. I didn't feel like I had nearly as much strong opinions about a lot of these games. And honestly, I thought there were a lot more city building games than there are. Uh, because 49, I think I had 64 for, for my, uh, worker placement. Uh, this is a theme that I really like. I really love the concept of building a city, but apparently I need to get some more of these to the table. But my top city building uh, uh, game of all time, with a surprising, is Kingsburg. And I didn't list any as bad, but these three, uh, I would never play ever again. So they're, they're close enough. And City Skylines, forget you. I'm putting you there. But there you go. That was my top, uh, was it 60, top 49 city building board slash card games of all time. If you enjoyed this list, be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. Also, if you have a unique idea... For, for where I could slot in here, let me know. I'm currently working on a cooperative list, but dear golly, that is going to take a very long time because there's like 3,000 games to go through. Uh, but next week, I'm thinking about doing a drafting one, but we'll go from there. But if you have any comments, if you want me to cover a specific genre of game, please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Oh, wait, no, I click over here. Stop watching me. Ooh.